Well, by all means, then, Matt, yeah. better take us to the next segment. There we go. All right. So the next album we are covering is Paul Westerberg with his debut album, 14 Songs. In the opening montage, you heard a clip from World Class Fad. And now you're going to hear a clip from Silver Naked Ladies. Silver Naked All right, so 14 Songs by Paul uh, Westerberg comes in at number 1,268 in the 1990s on Best Ever Albums, number 128 in 1993, number 7,556 of all time. It is Paul Westerberg's highest rated album on Best Ever Albums, and he is ranked number 2,417 in overall artist rankings. And so, yeah, so this is uh, his debut album released on June 15th, 1993, which means in a little over a week it will turn 31 years old, mm-hmm. um, which incidentally that's just happening all the time now. There's just right. it's like this album came out 30 years ago and it makes you go, shit, that album's 30 years old, right? It's just that's the era that at least I find myself in like nowadays just going, wow, to all these albums that I'm very familiar with are over 30 years old. So there mm-hmm. you go. Um, so he's so in terms of it depends when you ask how many albums does paul westerberg have well that all depends on what you're talking about if you're talking about pure solo albums he's got six but he also has three albums as an alter ego uh you know personality grandpa boy or maybe it's just a different name under a different name he's got a couple albums there uh he has an album with juliana hatfield that just came out uh well that most one of his more recent albums actually not just came out it came out in 2016 and then he's got a bunch of music that was released digitally that's not technically released as a proper album so Mm. uh so paul westerberg has a lot of content out there if you uh if you care to go find it so um but in terms of proper solo albums he's got six uh we did cover uh paul westerberg in his uh stint with the replacements we covered several of their records including let it be from season three episode 15 uh there was tim from season three bonus episode 11 pleased to meet me which was in season three as a bonus and all shook down was also in season three as a bonus as well so we've done four Hmm. replacement records uh paul westerberg's been listed as the genre of alternative rock and influences are probably similar to that of the replacements including alex chilton bob dylan rolling stones big star Elvis Costello, Jackson Brown, Tom Petty, Cheap Trick, and Fleetwood Mac. And artists that he was credited as influencing include Bright Eyes, The Goo Goo Dolls, Ryan Adams, Wilco, Pete Yorn, Brendan Benson, Semisonic, John's favorite, favorite Semisonic, and The Hold Steady. Um, so the highest charting single is actually a tie. Uh, it's uh, one of the songs on this record, World Class Fad. And Dyslexic Heart, which was a song from the single soundtrack, they both hit number four on the U.S. alt-rock charts. And a little history about uh, Westerberg. He was born Paul Harold Westerberg in Minneapolis on December 31st, 1959, just in time to ring in the 1960s. And he bought his first guitar, uh, his first acoustic guitar, from his sister when he was 12 years old. And by the time he got to high school, he moved on to an electric guitar. And at this point, he started playing with various uh, bands in high school as well as after high school. Uh, he fell in love with the Sex Pistols and later said that that changed his musical world view and uh, didn't really didn't go to college after high school, but instead took up a job as a janitor. And this is where the replacements come in. He uh, we told we told that story when we covered the replacements about how he would listen to the band in the bushes while they were like playing. He was like hiding on his way home from work and listening to the band. And then eventually he I think he I read a story somewhere that he encouraged the uh, the, he, he kind of walked in and met met the band and then he later encouraged the uh the lead singer at the time to quit because he's like they're just going to kick you out anyway and so the lead singer did quit yep. and then he joined the band so um, <laughs> the book is great that yeah. they wrote about the, the sort of the, the history of the replacements uh it's long but it's a really good read and yeah that yeah. was the story that was basically told like i'm gonna you should go ahead and quit and let me be the lead singer it was pretty much the, the... <laughs> you remember the name of the book john for people uh, I, I want to say it was like let it be it was one of their singles like it was, it was something along the lines of like let it be the the replacement story or something like that i mm-hmm. i read it probably five four years ago um it, it's a it's good not, read it's not trouble boys the true story oh no that's it you're that's it that's the that's the i'm sorry okay. yeah that's the, the story right there i did yeah, trouble boys true yes. story of the replacements by bob Mayer. 
NBA yes, chart. that's it. If you're interested, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. There you Free go. publicity the there the for best. Mr. Mayor. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to cover the. Re- we've, if you want to hear more about the replacements, you can go back and listen to that um, when we covered Let It Be. There's a pretty extensive bio there. Uh, but basically, after the band uh, disbanded, uh, uh, Paul Westerberg did sign a solo deal with Reprise Records or Reprise Records, and uh, and that's when his first solo releases like Dyslexic Heart came out. Uh, the title of this record is a reference to J.D. Salinger's Nine Stories. Uh, the album also features contributions from a gentleman named Ian McLagan, uh, who was the former keyboardist of The Faces, which was another band that Westerberg uh, credits as being um, a favorite of his. Hmm. So uh, it's noted for that as well. Um, so also, <laughs> despite the fact that The Replacements were one of the few artists or few acts that was ever banned from playing Saturday Night Live after their crazy performance in the 80s uh they did invite paul westerberg to perform in the show in 1993 which he did um so i guess he was i don't know he was a passable at that time or Mm -hmm. just as long as the other guys weren't there uh uh also at this time is you could hear some of his songs coming up on shows like melrose place and friends um, he did co-write and perform a song with Joan Jett for her album notorious and also a song that the two of them uh performed on the tank girl soundtrack Oh, um, yeah. Nice. I think Lori Petty was in that movie, if I'm not she mistaken. She is Tank Girl, yes. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, like I said, he did. In, he then released some work under the name Grandpa Boy. And, you know, so I guess one of the things that you could say about Westerberg's solo work versus the replacements work was that he did go more in a, you know, kind of more of a piano-driven, it's been described as piano-driven, melancholy, more personal songs than maybe he did with, with the replacements. And I do remember when we covered the replacements at that, you know, he did have, he did kind of have some of those songs ready to go, but the other members weren't really feeling that those were replacement songs. And, you know, actually I think Bob Stinson was like, save that for your solo album. Cause that's not a replacement song, you know? Hmm. So I'm sure some of these songs came from, from that. Um, uh, in December 20, 2005, Westerberg re- re- reunited with Tommy Stinson and Chris Mars to record two new songs for a replacements compilation. Uh, that was released in 2006. And uh, also, I, I had to laugh at this. Uh, in 2006, he wrote eight original songs for the animated film Open Season. So he's also got <laughs> some film credit there, Weird. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Yep. Um, and he's got his own guitar. He's got it's it's the uh, it's it's cre- uh, created a guitar with a Boston-based guitar man- manufacturer in 2006 to create his signature edition PW580. That's got a red plaid pickguard. Uh, you can get one for about 300 bucks on eBay for those of the, you that are interested. Uh, he did write a um, eulogy for Al- his one of his heroes, Alex Chilton, when he died in 2010. That was in the New York Times. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the late, in late 2015, he announced that he had formed a new band called the I Don't Cares. That's with Juliana Hatfield, formerly of the Lemonheads and their debut album, Wild Stab was released in January, 2016. So, um, so little history there, of Paul Westerberg. Uh, I don't think we're covering, I don't covering any more of his solo records. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but anyway, um, it's time to talk about, 14 songs let's start with josh what are your takes on what's your take on this record josh yeah this this immediately put a smile on my face when i was listening to it this it you know it it's missing something from the replacements but i really just love kind of his voice his style of uh guitar and garage rock and that mixed with the piano and his his ability to create these really good really great melodies uh with the garage rock sound that's kind of like everything i want from music and that's one of the reasons i uh, you know he was a valuable addition to the replacements and why i like them so much and i feel like you know we the the carryover from the replacements is still here i i I think he um as a solo artist you know i guess you can make the argument it sounds like the replacements but um it's still different enough that that um that i like it just as much um as that i you know his his writing ability is strong on here you know songs like knocking on mine world-class fad even uh you know deeper songs like dice behind your shades and and um even some songs that are kind of like almost sound like demos or something and in black eyed susan and even here we are that they just really kind of get to that melancholy that he has but i feel like this album overall is pretty upbeat um 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, I really like this album overall. Uh, Silver Naked Lace has this really rocking, like, piano, you know, blues riff to it. Um, it and the songs, too, uh, one of the things that I liked about the replacements is they have this kind of, like, bar band sing-along feel to them. And I feel like that's here as well um, with the hooks and and uh, some of the other elements Um you know, so, song someone I once knew has hand claps in it, which I always really like, and adds to that kind of, you know, kind of drunken revelry feel that that the replacements had and that this album has. And I don't know, it's just whatever his whatever he does with the guitar and and uh, the way he sings and kind of strains his voice and has kind of a uh, like a rough quality to it, but but um, just really upbeat um i just really respond to 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 what he does and uh, it's just a great rock album and it's it's pure in its own way i feel like and and um he's got strong writing abilities and strong uh piano um compositions as well and so i just really you know in comparison you know i alluded to the comparison to jollification i feel like this is just like i immediately knew that I liked this album and responded to it in in a way that I didn't with Jollification. You know, they're two, they're different sounding albums, obviously different going for different things, but uh in the in the space of like pop and rock, it's just uh when you know, you know and and I know with uh Paul Westerberg's album. So, thumbs up for me. This is great. Yeah, man, for for me the magic's kind of gone here. Um, oh, I really? have a little bit different. Yeah, I we saw a little bit of the transition from the replacement sound to all shook down, yeah. but there were mm-hmm. still all kinds of great songs on that. And it was a melancholy album uh, and it was sort of a Paul Westerberg driven show. And it really gave me, even though it was under the replacements name, right? It kind of had been stripped down to it in name only in some ways. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of hope for this album. Um, I kind of was like, I, I'm shocked. I haven't, listen to more Paul Westerberg since I love the replace. I love all the replacements, even when they were kind of like a dirt, like a grimy punk band at the beginning that was as much experimental as anything. Yeah. Um, and then I listened to this album. I'm like, ah, I, I do remember what kind of why I didn't delve into it. And I just, I don't know. This album dragged for me in, in a, in a lot of ways. Um, it felt longer than the 48 minutes. There were, there were moments that I did connect with, and, and it does start off with a really strong song at the beginning. So when I heard that one, I was like, okay, it's different than The Replacements, but it's going to kind of be like All Shook Down, where it's yeah. a little bit more um, contemplative and stuff like that. And it does end well with Down Love, which is basically a replacement song on this album. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I got past those two songs, Dice Be- Behind Your Shades is a song that's pretty good. Uh, and I will say the lyrics on this album are solid. I always connect with sort of Paul Westerberg's sensibilities, but it was interesting what you read, Matt, because all of the influences and obviously the contemporaries of the replacements are are mainline groups that I really love and connect with. And then you kind of read all the groups that it was like inspired by, you know, his mm-hmm. stuff. And it was a lot more groups that I really don't connect as much with. There's, It's a lot more what I would call like, earnest rock a little bit which is fine I, i'm not against earnestness but it kind of veered more into that um like a rock as adult contemporary a little bit to me and and i listened to this album a second time thing okay it kind of you know don't don't compare it to the replacements and i didn't think i had like because i yeah. i understood inherently that it it should be and was a different thing but what i realized after the second listen was what it is is not it feels a little it's crazy to say this about a guy in the replacements but it it feels a little bit like how i process his career after the replacements it feels a little bit like making music for corporate you know cds to be played in stores and on shows and stuff like that and you even mentioned like he was involved with like melrose place and you know mm-hmm. doing collabs and you know um different stuff and, and that's kind of there was like a um like a rawness and a like a dangerousness yeah. to the replacements that I really connected with and all shook down even though it was more in the 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 um sentimental and the earnest 
there still was a little bit of that grit. And I think what really drove away from me is there just was no grit left in this. And I think because there wasn't, it just, it, it just kind of became j just like some of those people Matt mentioned, like, you know, Pete Yorn and, you know, uh, stuff fine. But I, I guess it's just sad for me. Like fine isn't what I like to think of for uh, the guy who was the, the, the creative force of one of my favorite bands of all time. So I got to say, I'm not going to say thumbs down, but it's definitely like an average category for me as an album, unfortunately. So something missing energy wise or with, I don't think it's something missing. It's just what it is, is not as appealing to me hmm. as what was, but not in the, I want you to remake what the replacements were. It's just, you know, artists evolve, right? And, right. you know, REM is one of my favorite bands in the world. And I said something similar about like out of time, like I like it, but this evolution of them, lots of people connect with, but it didn't connect with me as much as other evolutions of the band pre and post. Right. Hmm. And that's kind of what I would compare this to. Although I liked out of time a lot more than I liked this album. Yeah. So does that help to explain it maybe a little bit better? Yeah. yeah I think yeah. so. Yep. I think I would probably split the difference between you guys. Um, Cause I think I, I, I liked it more than John, but maybe not as much as Josh. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, to me, this record, uh, it shown more when uh, it was more of that garage rock, uh, heavier, you know, faster paced agree. type song. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think Knocking on Mine is a great opener. I really thought World Class Fad was a great, that was a lot of energy there. That was great too. Um, Silver Naked Ladies, it's great. That's a, that was an example of like a blue, like it's kind of, in lesser hands, it becomes a generic blues like bar band kind of thing, but yeah. there's something about the way that he plays that or that riff and his vocals that takes something that would ordinarily be kind of generic and make it and, and bring it to a different level, at least as far as my taste go. Cause I really did like that. I liked the riff of that song and I liked, I, I like his voice when he's, when he's kind of, he's not screaming, but he's, it's, it's more of a, it's more of a scream type sound than, um, than just a traditional mm -hmm. singing. Um, you know, uh, something is me was a great song. Down love, like those songs, and they're kind of interspersed. Like they, th as opposed to the Jodeci record, right? He's there's a lot of mixing, mixing of the record and kind of flowing. Um, some of the songs seem a little unfocused. I agree, Josh. There's something weird about the production of a song like Black Eyed Susan. It's like what, like you know, you're kind of getting a vibe of the song, the the production in general, and then you've got this song that's like you now you gotta you actively have to turn it up because it's <laughs> right. just not as loud in your yeah. in your speaker set for whatever reason that is, um, you know. And then there's a song like um, someone I once knew, which was very I was very nonplussed by. I thought that chorus was pretty terrible <laughs> it's just like it was you know and i could so from from that perspective there's some moments like that on here where you're like wow that's the best you got paul like and for you john as being this is like the hero of one of your favorite bands of all time to kind of put out something like this yeah, yeah it stands to reason that that's like ooh, like it's it's not only like it's it not the songs aren't as good, me. it just but, was a sad look down, yeah you know right I mean? yeah. it's an extra it's an extra layer of disappointment right yeah. or just or, or, or dissatisfaction that you have with it right um you know and then there were some songs on here that were like um a few minutes of silence um maybe uh things which i liked both of those songs but they were starting to veer a little bit into the generic realm which i think i'm a little bit more forgiving than other people are because sometimes i'm, I'm okay with that so um so yeah it's, it's it's a bit of a mixed bag for me but i thought where he hit he hit really well and i think i still view paul westerberg as being someone that shoot i should probably i would like to see him live at i should probably see him live at some point because yeah. there's a lot of his songs whether he's going to do some of these solo songs on his own or if he's doing some replacement songs uh they, they're like the exact type of music i want to see like at a show or in a bar or something like that you know just a lot of good energy there's some country elements to this there's some americana roots rock there's punk rock you know kind of just melding all that together and there's some 90s alt rock in here too um and when his voice is really on you know i i i really love the passion the energy that he brings to to the music um and some of the songs that are a little bit more of the, the slower end of things, like First Glimmer, I thought was good. I thought Dice Behind Your Shades was decent. So he's definitely exploring different pacing, the, the different pacing of this record. But it's, yeah, it's not a replacements record, and that's okay. Um, it's yeah. just it's it's just not going to stand out as much. But there's definitely, I could say this, there's definitely several songs on this record that if I were to put on my own, like, playlist or whatever, they would definitely go on, and I would want to listen to them over and over again. So yeah. there's probably a couple, there's some filler on here. There's probably, a, you know, three or four songs more than it needs to be um 
but again, coming at a four, with fourteen songs coming at it under like forty eight minutes, you know, it's 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 digestible at the same time too. So I'm I'm giving it a a, a slight thumbs up. I it's it's definitely I see both of your points and where you're coming from, but I don't think that um I, it it still holds up enough for me that I I'd be okay going back to it. But I get that it's not quite what what you know maybe I was hoping it to be. Yeah. Does it feel a bit derivative, maybe? I don't, I, or maybe the songwriting isn't isn't there as I, much? I don't know. I, 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 a like couple of, I, I really hate the production of this album mm. is, is a barrier for me, I think. And not just the inconsistency, but yeah. I, I think the production just makes it very vanilla. And yeah. like I said before, it steals the... You know, I, it was never hard to connect emotionally with Paul Westerberg for me at all in The Replacements. And like I said... This album is is slightly better regarded than All Shook Down, which, like, you know, it's a Replacements album, but it isn't. It's a Paul Westerberg album. And there was a lot I connected with on that album um, in terms of the songs. And I think the songs, the quality of the lyrics are still there. And there's still things. It just, the the production wasn't there. And I just feel, I I, I just, there just wasn't, there wasn't yeah. anything that, once again, it's kind of like the Lightning Seeds album that we talked about before. There just wasn't anything that, that pushed it over the top to me. And there wasn't yeah. anything that demanded a re-listen for me personally. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I would, derivative, I mean, it's, it's. I don't know if that was, that's the issue either. Yeah, the production, it's it's more about the unevenness of the production, um, I would say for me. But I, I, I think John's point is taken. Yeah. Um, with that as well, that it's it's there's there's something lacking a little bit in that. Um, but um, yeah, 